Thank you to Sages for having me. Ziad, PGY4 from uh, NYP Methodist. So, I have nothing to disclose. So, laparoscopic guided uh, tap block. This uh, targets the sensory nerve supply of the interior lateral abdominal wall in a plane between the uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominus muscles using the triangle of petite as a landmark. Targets the T7 to T12 intercostal nerves, ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric, and the lateral cutaneous branches of the dorsal rami of L1 to L3. Uh, it's been proposed and well documented as a method of improving perioperative pain control in our bariatric population. We hypothesize that laparoscopic guided tap block uh, will aid as an additional modality to further optimize pain control, reduce opiate utilization, facilitate early ambulation, and expedite return to normal activity in patients undergoing uh, LG tap at the completion of laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. So we have 271 consecutive sleeve gastrectomy patients, June 2016 to August 2018. The data was collected and recorded prospectively. We had no perioperative mortalities, no conversion to open, no intraop uh, blood transfusions. 140 patients underwent sleeve without tap block. We named this the pre-tap group. And 131 uh, consecutive patients underwent sleeve followed by tap block. This was our tap group. All operations were performed by a single surgeon using the same clinical pathways. Both groups of patients received stand standardized general anesthesia and uh, intravenous patient-controlled PCA and acetaminophen was used postoperatively for 24 hours. We used enhanced recovery protocols uh, with the administration of clear liquid diet uh, the morning after surgery and no uh, routine contrast gastrograph and swallows. Also no, no uh, routine blood work. Our preoperative evaluation, all patients met NIH criteria for bariatric surgery. They were evaluated in a multidisciplinary setting Therapeutic options were given, extensive informed consent, and we have a prospective database documenting the severity of their symptoms, comorbidities, and quality of life. PCA volume was calculated in milliliters for 24 hours or, or until discharge of Sooner, and patients and nurses were surveyed with an ambulation questionnaire while inpatient. Patient pain levels were assessed every four hours by nursing and reported as a mean of 24 hours of visual analog scale, 1 to 10. And uh, post-op day one, patients reported an average overall pain score, 0 to 10. Mean hospital stay was calculated in days. Return to activity is reported by patients on the first outpatient visit in days. And duration in days of post-operative pain medication, which were prescribed liquid opiates, were reported by patients. Multivariate linear regression was used to assess factors contributing to return to normal activity. This is an example of our... Uh, ambulation questionnaire from the nurse's perspective, and another example from the uh, patient's perspective. Our technique. So we use a four-port technique. The extraction port, uh, you can see, is in the left upper quadrant. That's where patients experience most of the pain uh, related to sleeve gastrectomy. And the three dots represent uh, where we uh, focus our local anesthetic. This is an example of a sleeve using a 34 French bougie. And this is an example of a, a larger specimen being extracted from that left upper quadrant, uh, 15 millimeter port. We do not do contrast uh, swallows routinely, but this is a normal anatomical, uh, what, you, what you would see after a sleeve. Uh, this is a short video, and you'll see us going and doing the tap block. Uh, we're injecting local anesthetic, what's a double bubble technique, and see preperitoneal infiltration, you move the needle back, about three to five millimeters, get in that tap plane, inject, uh, and you'll see a nice uh, kind of bubble forming. And that's, where, that's how you know you're there. Our post-operative care, the patients were transferred to the floor and assisted with ambulating within two hours. If they remained in PACU for very long, they, were, they got up and ambulated as well. Uh, Post-op day one, these patients were advanced to clear liquid diet discharged home after tolerating liquids and oral analgesics, and uh, that's it. Our results, pre-tap versus tap. 
So statistical methods, we had normally distributed uh, continuous variables reported as a mean plus or minus standard deviation, whereas non-normally distributed continuous variables are reported as a median range. Categorical, categorical variables are reported as a number and percentage. Students' t-test was used to compare the means of normally distributed continuous variables, while Wilcox and Rank's was, test was used to compare non-normally distributed continuous variables. So our demographics, you can see that with age, sex, weight, BMI, uh, the two groups are comparable. Ambulation. So our patients, most patients ambulated within two hours of uh, post-op, and then we measured again, and a greater majority of patients were ambulating within six hours. The patients were also uh, encouraged to ambulate every four hours overnight, so if they're sleeping, they need to get up and ambulate every four hours. Pain control. We found a significant uh, decrease in post-operative opiate use. This was self-reported by the patients on their first uh, follow-up visit. A uh, mean of 1.29 days versus 2.19, uh, with the TAP having less post-operative opiate use in the outpatient setting. Our other outcomes, return to activity. Uh, the TAP group showed 2.08 days return to activity average versus pre-TAP having 2.81 with a significant p-value. When we performed a multivariate analysis on return to activity, controlling for age, BMI, OR time, PCA volume, and, and average pain score, TAP block was found to be an independent predictor of an early return to activity. In conclusion, our study has shown that TAP block is associated with an early return to activity, decreased hospital stay, and decreased days of post-operative uh, opiate use. Tap block falling asleep gastrectomy should be, may be considered an additional uh, modality of pain control in the perioperative uh, period. And uh, we're going to do a larger study looking at uh, the SF36 quality of life survey and return to work. We recognize the limitations of our study, although the study groups are well matched. It's not a randomized controlled trial. And in general, our patients have a shorter length of stay uh, with a well tolerated pain score. This increases the difficulty when looking at. Uh, small variables, such as the length of stay. A larger sample size would increase the power of our data and may provide more significant data, which we're also doing. So our references, acknowledgments. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.